They're so taking drinks. They're taking them. It turns out we're really no better than them. Since the drinking behaviors of these monkeys are I so mean, human, you'd swear it was a joke. Bro, a good Paloma goes a long way. What's up, guys? You got VIP Panda. So today we're going to be diving into some more Casual Geographic. You guys have been requesting these. Um, this one is Animals Getting Elevated and Super Faded. Sounds like a great video to me. Let's just dive into it, guys. All right, then, and without further ado, let's go. <laughs> oh, we're hanging like that? Huh? We drunk? Okay. <laughs> I get high. So one night in 2011, a Swedish man called the authorities to remove a moose in his neighbor's yard. He added that he believed the moose was intoxicated. How did he know it was intoxicated? How? What? No, no reason really, just, just oh. an inkling. Apparently just the moose assumed? got wasted off apples from a tree and got so tipsy that it tipped over and became part of the tree. Wait, 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 he said apples, bro? You could get drunk off of apples? Tree. And it took fire and rescue services to divorce the sauce moose from its tree. The moose got up and proceeded to walk back into the forest. What are we doing? The next morning, after passing out and going AFK in the same neighbor's garden. Oh. So mostly happy ending. Nobody got hurt. Okay. The tree was left more or less intact. And these pictures were taken by the man's 10-year-old son with the hopes that he could sell them and use the money to buy a PlayStation. CNN the... would end up buying the pictures. Oh. So now there's some 22-year-old Swedish dude that has the best conversation story <laughs> no matter what room he's in. For real. This wasn't a one-time thing. If Bro. you had a nickel for every drunk moose story in Sweden, you'd have enough to buy yourself a first class flight to experience a Buzz Bullwinkle in person. That's kind of, kind of story you don't even need to be drunk to there tell. There was that time a moose got plastered and decided to harass school children. And there was even one case where some moose binged on a forbidden fruit and then... Uh, well, I can't tell you exactly what's happening here, just oh. know it's a three player game with zero controller. It's believed that when apples fall from trees, they eventually ferment and all the sugars become alcohol. The moose and when freaks. moose eat these fruits... Well, at best, a oh, child gets a PlayStation, and at worst, a child loses. Yeah, his because like you could ferment it, kind of. Oh, okay, that that makes sense, you know. And then I'm sure like the chemical compounds in their bodies react differently to something that we would eat. You know, they probably get faded. Stationed in play, but some that is wild. That alcoholics <laughs> oh my are gosh! And that moose are just too massive to be put out of commission by some apples. My response: there is no sober explanation for this. Look at this dude. <laughs> it's not a stretch to believe some animals will go out of their way to alter their consciousness. What the, and the hell? methods get a lot more out of pocket than just eating expired apples. I found Brown bears the bird. in the reserve in Russia apparently huffed jet fuel uh -huh. to get elevated. Photographer Igor Spilinok spent seven months in bear country, and he says the bears would find these used barrels, take a hit of kerosene and gasoline, and proceed to airdrop their conscience to Mars. Oh. And yeah, the big bears started feeding, to the no. point where the kerosene carnivores would actively stalk helicopters, just on the off chance they get to lap up and yeah, they, was the they said, no, the source is in there. Let me get and some. if you're judging them, you must not know what humans are willing to introduce into their bodies just to let their minds ascend. According I don't know what you're survey, talking about. About 46% um. of Americans call Christmas their favorite holiday. For any of the 46 watching this, I apologize in advance. Reindeer what? have been seen actively seeking out and eating the Amanita muscaria mushroom. Thanks to their no, special digestion, they're, they're able trips. to eat something considered poisonous to most animals. Oh, the shit, mushroom is also a well-known hallucinogen, and considering reindeer will go out of their way even digging through snow to cop a taste, chances are they know too. Is and that while a... it is poisonous, it's technically poisonous the same way alcohol is. Which is why shamans in Siberia would down the mushroom in rituals in order to become one with nature and all the animals in it while getting absolutely obliterated in the process. That it's would be even pretty though. Since unwanted toxins are flushed <laughs> Yo, out look at his eyes. Urine, if you didn't want to run the risk of getting folded by fungus, you could drink the pee of an inebriated ice deer to join the same wavelength as them. It's said that the fungi gives the users feelings and visions oh, of taking flight. He got a red and white being that puts reindeers in the clouds. Uh, did it, did it Santa <laughs> might have been a mushroom this whole time. Or a shaman. And the reindeer charioting his sleigh of That explains why when Mario eats that one, it looks exactly like he goes, do, 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 do. That's this exactly what he was a doing. Caribou cooked off shrooms. Now you see why Rudolph was a red nosed outcast. While everyone else was trying toadstools, he was out here crushing crystals. Belongs to a shark and R. Kelly by the right reindeer, and oh, you'll whoa, both whoa. believe you can fly. Uh, no. That's probably in bad taste. Like the reindeer. Pee. In 2009, <laughs> Tasmanian farmers were plagued by crop circles that seemed to appear in their fields overnight. Some people thought it was aliens shooting their shot with the earth. No, the don't tell me that was the deers. This is a Bennett's wallaby. And just know this wallaby wallet. Tasmania he is the world's largest source of the poppies used to make opium painkillers. And the travel sized kangaroos break into the poppy pastures and eat enough to go on a literal field trip with no school bus. Turns out the circles were caused by faded wallabies nah, raising don't do in that. circles and then crashing. No, and these way. no people wanted those to be aliens so bad. 
as far as scaling fences and eating what? the same white opium gum used to make morphine and the purple stuff Lil Wayne likes. I all bet that you to get more all the conspiracy theories are upset. And after they eventually come back to Earth, the Wallabies wake up and just go about their day. Because only someone with no job and no bills to pay can afford to live like this. Which is why bees don't be having any of that. You want to get high on hive time? You better pack up your stuff and figure life out because you finna be homeless, good buddy. In the summer, Ooh. the intense heat can cause the nectar and flowers to ferment. The end game of that is literal buzzed bees flying under the influence. And the symptoms are exactly what you'd expect. Oh, a hammered honeybee will often bump into flowers and trees and can even get so slush that they can't make it back home and can no flatline way. if they get too cold at night. It doesn't get a whole lot better if they do find their way back. Like I said, bees have no He's tolerance falling, for the and any bee suspected of being on the juice is violently confronted and thrown out the hive. And what? since bees primarily communicate through a waggle dance, it doesn't take long for a blitz bee to oh expose God, it. In some cases, guard bees will cripple the offender by chewing their oh, legs off to make sure they physically no. can't come crawling back. Yeah, they make sure to make an example out of him. And the reason is because bringing fermented nectar into the hive can quite literally destroy the entire colony from the inside. It'd be kind of like passing out special brownies before the big company wide meeting. So yeah, bees on booze lose a whole lot more than their sobriety. Bees ain't the only ones gambling with life by flying under the influence. In 2006 in Vienna, Not Austria, the birds. something birds were found expired on the ground. But when they were examined by scientists, they didn't find the signs of avian flu like they were expecting. What they did find were rotten berries in their systems, and suddenly the pieces started coming together. It's believed that the berries fermented inside the birds right. and got them all faded in an NBA legend's hairline. Oh, Alfredo, about oh no! I feel so bad, bro. A bunch of intoxic I feel so bad for all the people who have the receding things. It sucks. Gated birds face planting in the wind. That's gonna be me in soon too. News, the same way people start slurring their words once they get to first base with a bottle. <laughs> Buried down birds will often sing like drums. Fifty like in this. Experiment, vocal zebra <laughs> finches were given some alcohol, and after a couple of sips, their songs got more disjointed, more disorganized, and just overall sloppy. Damn. Worst part is. They probably thought they were killing it too, <laughs> which makes them the complete opposite of bats. Ooh. And you'd think something that flies for a literal living wouldn't do it while mind fogged. I said fog. I said oh, fog. Oh, but bats don't really have okay. a choice, and the ones that eat primarily fruit <laughs> and nectar can often fall for the same traps as birds and bees and get royally fogged over. Except bats might Yo, just bats, have the tolerance of a rush. Bats creep me out. Like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, they're so cute, but when I see something like that, I'm like, nah, bruh. I'm out. In another experiment, you know, it's funny how like often science involves drugging or drunking wildlife. But Ugh. bats from Belize were liquored up until some of them had a blood alcohol content of See, look at that. Point. They look like Keep gargoyles. Keep while that point zero eight is playing with the law, life, and Lucifer, since that's who you finna see Oh, yeah. Next. But the drunk <laughs> bats were somehow able to perfectly maneuver through an obstacle course without FUIing into How a the... fist. They were also able to perfectly use their echolocation while very much buzzed off nectar. Wow, Unlike the are, songbirds who smart. literally couldn't hold their berries for their life. And since bats from Central and South America were able to handle it better than old world bats, it's believed this tolerance came from them eating more fermented fruit. So basically, the reason bats are able to completely drink you under the table is because the ones that couldn't became part of the past. Bats Got are some it. of the lightest mammals on the planet, yet are also one of the strongest heavyweights when it comes to elk. But they aren't number one. The animal with the highest tolerance is something you might not have even heard of before. Uh -huh. The pen-tailed tree shrew weighs uh, less than a pack of Skittles, yet can somehow also outdrink an elephant. The Malaysian what tree the? shrew regularly sips nectar from the Bratam plant. A plant so high in alcohol content that it smells like Peter Griffin after a shift at the brewery. A concentration of 3.8% makes it as potent as beer and gives this nectar one of the highest ACs of any food. Yet the shrew drinks it huh, I kinda wanna try that. like water and seems immune to it. To the point where the <laughs> tiny squirrel monkey in Malaysia will spend hours nursing nectar. Apparently that's like a human downing nine glasses of wine and they do it without four kids in a failed marriage. And science what? doesn't exactly know how tree shrews can do this without unlisting themselves from the senses. And the shrews are so committed to the cause that the plants they drink from have literally evolved to make themselves more accessible to them. Oh, the Bratan has strong sturdy stems and potent smelling nectar that basically acts as a Batman signal to shrews. They really spend millions of years investing into the shrews drinking habits. And the shrews evolve to be able to help themselves without also getting slumped. The slow loris is also a common customer of the Rattam, and in an experiment, the bug eyed booze monkey chose alcohol over <laughs> I don't literal know, water. All I know is that he's gone. The the you saw them eyes. He was out of this world. I'm gonna go ahead and put an ad right here, because this is the part of the oh. video where a lot of y'all are gonna click off, and honestly, Ooh. I don't blame you. Chimps share about 99% of their Not DNA me. with us, <laughs> and feeding for the fermented stuff is very much included. Okay. Chimps in West Africa have been caught trying the same palm wine villagers drink. They'd wait for the sugary palm wine to ferment and then use leaves as sponges to soak it up just so they can squeeze it into their mouths. That's kind of yeah, smart though. Chimps got turned. But sometimes they get a little too gone for everyone. It's kind of like they're blue. doing it slow. There have been multiple cases of chimps raiding illegal brewing setups oh, in Uganda shit, and making they... off with of whatever beer they could. And in some cases, the beer blasted chimps would proceed to hunt human children. Chimps are already bad enough, but drunk chimps? That escalated, didn't it? 
I'm not going to go too far into the specifics for the sake of our mental that. health and guidelines. Just know that the same way chimps will stalk and jump smaller monkeys as prey is the exact same way they oh, go yeah. after children. And not to us. mention a chimp heavy on liquid courage oh, is more damn. likely to run a fade than just one. <laughs> In their defense, humans encroaching onto their natural habitat and so adding even more competition is the biggest reason for chimp carnage. But in their offense, chimps are 1000% the angry, belligerent drunks of the animal world. And they're not the only primates that make their drinking our problem. Vervet monkeys on the Caribbean island of St. Kitts manage to drink themselves into an addiction. To the point what where the, the drunkies fuel it by stalking tourists from the trees just so oh. they can snatch any drinks left unattended. The booze bandits are so committed that they even managed to work out the best times and places to get away with their thievery. It got They're so ridiculous drinks. that researchers decided to study that. It turns them. out we're really no better than them. Since the drinking behaviors of these monkeys I are mean, so human, you'd swear it was a joke. Bro, a good Paloma goes a long way. In this experiment, they found that some monkeys are social drinkers that only participate if they other monkeys said, are involved. Oh. Then you have the regular drinkers, the ones who do it, well, regularly. And Let's go out for drinks. still able to help lead the troop. So they're pretty much the functional Drinks on me, literally. And then there's the bingers, the ones that drink themselves into a coma oh, or damn, until damn, they get damn, so damn, aggressive damn. they pick a fight with someone. So yeah, I'd say they're the frat boys of the group. These are the ones that would drink themselves into an early life retirement if you Look at how deep he is, bro. And finally, you have is, the monkeys bro. that don't or barely drink at all. Also, apparently, this is just funny to me, apparently it's the younger vervet monkeys that are more likely to turn up than the adults, since the adults have to be alert and aware of social dynamics in the group. Your peep out can replace monkey with human and everything I said still tracks, and it doesn't just stop at booze. Once in the prehistoric times of 2000, I didn't even know experiment, they was a bunch like of that. You know what? We'll rule of thumb. If I ever say the phrase in an experiment, expect nothing but nonsense to follow. This time, it involved getting a bunch of squirrels monkeys stoned and then giving them the option to self-medicate which they did as the monkeys that were introduced to mary jane look how pro look at how like they're pros at it right like they literally know exactly how to hold it use the straw and everything too like, like push a lever that's to scary yo THC. i would never want chimps to take over to the world high. and i could have told <laughs> them without the experiment especially when you see the things lemurs do to boost their conscience. even though they're not technically monkeys the primates of madagascar might okay. have the most creative way of getting lit millipedes <laughs> are poisonous and black oh. lemurs specifically will grab the bugs chew on them and then rub the toxins oh, all over their fur the? as if it's bug spray. And science says that's exactly what they use it for. But what? the poison also doubles as a mind-altering life choice that causes lemurs to drool and become the literal highest in the room. Meaning I lemurs also self-medicate. They just be smoking millipede packs. <laughs> now there's a chance that lemurs really are just only using this as bug repellent, but this is not oh, the conduct of someone who would pass a pee test. As for the millipede, imagine millions of years of evolution just for your biggest flex and defense to be used as a struggle ball for a lemur in its stoned age. I'm sure the puffer fish can relate. You knew this was coming the moment you read the title. And to the animal, it's not illegal for them. Puffer fish are one of the most <laughs> good things alive. And dolphins will take turns chewing on the puffer and then giving it to the next one in the rotation. What? Quite literally puff, a puff, puff gives. Oh, uh, there like you with go. The toxin, the See, toxin they know. The puffer fish seems to have an effect on the dolphins. What the effect resulting in some doped up dolphins and a seriously traumatized puffer. And now you see why she's single. Remember how I said a tiny tree could drink an elephant under the entire bar? That wasn't a throw. That I said that for sense. a reason. For a while, scientists called cap on the stories of inebriated elephants and their biggest claim Yo. was that it would take an outrageous amount of elk to have an effect on an animal that huge. Turns out the most plus size animal walking the earth today is also a massive lightweight. The ADH7 no gene is the one way. most responsible for helping break down ethanol, aka the drink that leads to good nights and bad decisions. Mm. Humans are able to handle their drink a little before French kissing mm. the floor, thanks to enzymes that allow us to break down ethanol faster than most animals. For elephants, oh, we the lucky ADH7 cause... gene is basically out of order. They're less able to hold their liquor. So if a couple elephants scarf down a bunch of fermented food, it's suddenly more likely that they get bodied. Which sounds fun, yeah, it sounds real cute until you realize that means they're drunk driving a 12,000 pound meat vehicle and the consequences can be bad for everyone's no. health. There's even a story out there where a herd of 50 something elephants near an Indian village drank liquor made from the Mahua tree and proceeded to drunkenly level the several what? houses and even delete a few people. Oh animals like chimps and elephants become a threat to society the moment they get under the bottle. But one animal's habit makes it a legitimate danger to itself. Who? Some dogs in Queensland have a developed doggy. an obsession with cane toads. What cane the? toads produce bufotoxin as self-defense, uh, but the, the poison is also hallucinogenic and dogs will often lick the toads and go off one. It's so potent that a dog exposed to it once is more likely to go out of its way to seek out another toad to get sued. No. And they probably got it from us. There was a brief but very real time where the cool kids your mom warned you about did toad behind the school. The toad? The point where Peter Griffin of all people had to tell him to tighten Not up. Peter. Yeah, that's pretty much playing chicken with the Grim Reaper. Since the poison is poison, oh, yeah. toad licking can result in both less dogs and oh, people. No. There was even one case where a Spanish adult film star got charged with manslaughter after huffing toad with his friends and one of them ascended and never returned. 2020 what? for real had some of the wildest headlines. But dogs ain't the only pets that be on timing. But if you've ever seen a cat on catnip, you already knew that. Catnip oh, comes from cats, the pedicateria. Man. 
I don't know what it is. I just love saying that. And that contains a chemical called nepodilactone. And nepodilactone will bind with receptors in the cat's nose the same way pheromones do. It even lights up the part of the brain responsible for, you know, the, the thing cats do with other cats to make more cats. Okay. This whole time we thought they were high. Mating season. When really catnip just makes them dumb and horny. And oh, even wow. I was half kidding, it actually makes a lot of sense since catnip doesn't work on cats that haven't reached sexual maturity. The chemicals also hit the cat's opioid system, which is a gateway to 15 minutes of feline euphoria. And it's, it's not like just house that. cats. Catnip apparently has wild cats like leopards, cougars, lynxes, and even some lions in a chokehold. So yeah, cats might just be the original stoner. I mean, Ugh. look at this jaguar. I mean, at least they're Lots chilling cats though. Grass and leaves as a way to clean their system. Jaguars doing it with the hallucinogenic yaji vine allows them to do so while also high fiving Joe Rogan. And for the oh, non-believers the out there, I defy you to look this jag in the eye and tell me it's sober. Bro in a galaxy, and it's not this oh, one. Oh no, and them peoples is uh, see them peoples though. I defy you to look. Oh yeah, nah, he gone. He doesn't even know what he's looking at. It's something Put though. He's jagging the eye and tell me it's so. <laughs> yeah, he Bro gone. in a galaxy and it's not this one. And it probably did start as something just to detox, but then eventually became a way of life. I mean, that's literally how cats got hooked on catnip. The <gasps> nepotecateria is a mosquito repellent. So there's a good cat chance that piss. cats getting hooked on the nip was just a consequence of wild cats trying to get off flies off their back. So I guess you can say mosquitoes do matter because without them, we wouldn't have videos like this. But that's gonna do it for this video. Go ahead and make sure you drink water. Hug your mother. Yes. Don't do toad, man. It's not a game. Thank <laughs> okay. you all so much for watching, and I'm gonna see y'all. I will. Uh, in the next one. I'll keep that in mind when I see another toad for right. sure. Oh, what? What's going on? What is that? Is that the poopy um scent? You gonna pass out? What is that? Oh yeah. <laughs> no. How could you? That's that dung spray, right? I heard it smells really bad. He just, bro, we, oh. Oh wait, is that the thing that, the catnip thing? Yo, I'm confused, what, is, what did he spray anyways? A lot of us in this world need to relax. Just like some of these animals, you know, kick back, watch your favorite show, read a book, do whatever you want to do, you know? Because uh, life is short, you just, you don't want to be um, on go all the time. So I definitely understand completely. Even the animals need relaxation time and some of them need they fix, which I don't know if I can help them with that. But uh, yeah, just don't do toad, right? <laughs> Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to support Casual Geographic himself. And also, don't forget to pay the punch that like button for more videos like this. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and stick around for more. All right, and until next time, bye!